The Gauss's law states that the divergence of the electric field is proportional to the charge density. The Faraday's law states that the static electric field has zero curl. If you need a refresher on these two Maxwell equations, please first check out our videos on Maxwell equations in the electromagnetic playlist. So given only the Gauss's and Faraday's law, and without any new physics or assumptions, can you arrive at the well-known Coulomb's law? The purpose of this video is to show you how one can arrive at this result in a few conceptually intuitive steps. Of course, we would need to rely on a few well-known mathematical tricks in our toolbox. One of such mathematical tricks that is crucial for solving this problem is the idea that a vector field with zero curl can always be expressed as the gradient of a scalar field. Thus, the static electric field is also a gradient field. In other words, the curl of a gradient field is always zero. The scalar field V is called the electric potential. A minus sign is introduced to be consistent with the standard definition of electric potential. Check out this video in the electromagnetism playlist for more about gradient field. We need to add one more trick into our toolbox, which is related to the concept of Green's function of a differential operator. Let's have a quick refresher on this topic. Given a linear differential operator in R here and denoted by L, there exists a function which, when operated, yields the Dirac delta function. We call this the Green's function of L. The Green's function is also called the impulse response function of the differential operator L. Let's now consider an arbitrary source term given by the function x and convolute it with the Dirac delta function over all space. The Dirac function in the integrand then picks up the values of x at r. On the left side of the equation, the differential operator L, which acts on R, can be pulled out of the integral. Thus, the term in the square bracket is the response function to the applied source function X. We shall denote the response function as Y. In summary, the general response to a differential operator, herein denoted as Y, can be expressed as the convolution of the Green's function with the input function X, where the Green's function is being defined as such. Great, we are now ready to solve the problem. As we shall show, the Coulomb's law can be obtained from the two Maxwell equations in just a few simple conceptual steps. Let's go. We begin with the Faraday's law which states that the curl of the static electric field is zero. This then allows us to express the electric field as a gradient of the scalar field V called the electric potential. Let's next take the divergence on both sides of the equation. The left-hand side, which is the divergence of the electric field, is given by the charge density according to Gauss's law. The right-hand side can be written compactly as the Laplacian of V, a well-known identity in vector calculus. This last equation is also known as the Poisson equation. Recalling what we just learnt in the previous chapter, the Laplacian will be our linear differential operator, the charge density our source function, and the electric potential is our response function. Thus, we can arrive at the expression for the electric potential V if we know the Green's function of the linear operator, which in this case is just the Laplacian. By definition, the Green's function for the Laplacian is such that when operated upon, it yields the Dirac delta function. For the 3D Laplacian operator, the Green's function is well known and is given within the green bracket. It is given by 1 over the modulus of r minus r prime with a factor of 4 pi. The Green's function technique provides a very elegant approach for writing down the solutions to the differential operator. We repeat here the key equations from the last chapter. The differential equation that we are interested in is the Poisson equation, and we know the Green's function for our Laplacian operator. Thus, this allows us to write down the expression for the response function V in terms of the source function, which is the charge density. This is the well-known result for the electric potential in electrostatics. Finally, the electric field can be derived from the gradient of the electric potential. To arrive at the final result, 
we need to take the gradient in the integrand. Note that the gradient is with respect to r and not r prime. This can be easily evaluated using the identity as shown. Thus, we obtained the well-known Coulomb's law in electrostatics. For more videos on this topic, please check out the Basics of Electromagnetism playlist.